Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we have Sharon with us, uh, who has actually written a writing platform story for us that we all loved, and she's also written on several other platforms. Um, and she chose to talk about how to choose your genre. Uh, I won't elaborate much. We'll just move on to what Sharon has to say. And I hope you can send in your questions as um, under the chat tab, and I will ask them, uh, ask her on your behalf towards the end of the webinar. Uh, so, if there's anything, any suggestion, any questions, please go ahead and you know send it across on chat. Sharon, over to you. Hello, Natasha, and everybody, Jagannot, and hello, all the attendees. Thank you so much for being here today, and it's a great honor to do this webinar on how to choose your genre. I hope it's useful and interesting for everybody. First, just a little bit about myself. I'm a civil servant and a writer born in Delhi, and right now I'm posted in Chandigarh in the Department of Telecom. The photo here is of my novel, The Shakespeare Murders. It was published last year by Tara India Research Press. And as Natasha said earlier, one of my uh, short stories, Contract Kavita, is available on Juggernaut. I also have two more short stories available just now online, uh, Jaipur Estate on freeeditorial.com and uh, Gods on Speed on whatpad.com. Uh, Gods on Speed is set in, in the Trojan War. Also, you're welcome to visit my website anytime and my blog. So let's begin. Here's an overview of the way the session's gonna go. Uh, we'll talk about what is a genre, then why do we need to pick a genre? How to pick a genre? I'll reveal my six secrets. Then I'm gonna share some of my favorite quotes on writing and following your dreams. And after we conclude, the session will be thrown open for question and answers. So to begin with, what is a genre? This is a, a definition I've got from the dictionary. It's a class or category of artistic endeavor, having a particular form, content, technique, or the like. Now, since they're mentioning artistic endeavor, uh, as we know, there are genres in various things, like you can have a genre in the fine arts and in sculpture. But since we're talking about writing, broadly speaking, the two main genres are fiction and nonfiction. They're further classified into poetry and prose, and the fiction genre, as I've written here, it says um, it, it contains romance, thrillers, science fiction, paranormal, historical fiction, and so on. Nonfiction can be travelogues, self-help, educational, and you know just about anything. So just very quickly, I'm just introducing the concept of a genre, and sorry if it's a bit uh, superfluous, you all probably know it, but I just thought that in order to structure the session, we should begin this way. Now, why do we need to pick a genre? Because that's the way the market works. All writing needs to be classified into some category or the other. You know, when you walk into a bookstore, you'll see that books are arranged on shelves category-wise more often than not. And you'll have, you know, self-help, educational. Uh, it needn't just be fiction and non-fiction, but uh, different bookshops uh, arrange their books differently. But you'll always find that they are arranged in a particular category. So first of all, that's just, just basic common sense. It's just easy to pick a, a book when you know where to go for it. Secondly, if you're writing as a professional, your agent or publisher will ask you which genre you're writing in. And it won't work to say, I write anything, I write this and that. They want you to be focused because they're busy people and they want to know that you understand the market. I'll give an example from my own experience. Uh, that when I started out as a professional writer, or rather when I started out trying to become a professional writer, um, um, about 10 years ago, I approached an agent called Dali Anderson in the UK. They're a very big agency. They're also lead child's agents. And I sent them two manuscripts. One was a romance, and one was a, a thriller. And uh, Dali said some really good things about my writing, but it didn't pick me. But anyway, um, what's important is that 
one of the first things Dali said is that I'm concerned that you're switching genres. So that's an important like, inside information from an agent who's really experienced. And so that's really important. So um, it's not just the, the way the market works also that your agent or publisher will ask you about which genre you're writing in. And it's a question I get asked all the time. The minute I mention I'm a writer, the first thing they'll say, what kind of books do you write? You know? So I guess it just makes sense. And also the market dictates it. Also, it's a, it's in continuation with what I've just been saying. It helps to establish your identity. The picture I've put up here is of a Stephen King book called Misery. I don't know if you've read it, but it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. And also, it's, it's a wonderful movie starring James Caan and Kathy Bates. And uh, the, the thing that's important here is that when you pick up a Stephen King book, you know it's going to be a horror novel or it's going to be a dark thriller. He's written some other books which are not exactly in the same category, but most of them are like that. So, you know, it won't do if, if you suddenly find him writing romance. I mean, I think, I don't know if it'll sell, it'll just be a big shock to everybody. Similarly, and Nicholas Sparks, just the opposite. He writes romance, he writes beautiful love stories. So when you pick up a Nicholas Sparks book, you'd expect to find that kind of story. Um, I read thrillers, and uh, definitely after Dali's warning, I haven't ventured into any other genre yet. But um, I just think it's important to keep these things in mind when we're going to, rather when we're trying to do this in a professional way. If you're writing just for the heck of it or just for your own satisfaction, then I guess you can do what you like. But otherwise, this is important. And again, to drive home this point, you know, John Grisham, who is famous for legal thrillers, uh, he once wrote a book called, I think, A Painted House or a Painted Fence or something. It was semi-autobiographical, but no one really read that. I mean, as far as I know, I've never met anybody who said they've read that. Now, how do we choose a genre? We've established why it's important. So how to choose a genre? I've called them my six secrets. First, go with your strengths and skills. Be realistic, know your target audience, assess the level of competition, recognize popular trends, and choose a genre you love reading. To begin with, go with your strengths and skills. What are you good at? Do you enjoy research? Are you an expert in any line of work? Do you possess any particular skills? Even something as banal as physics or engineering can spur a person into becoming a successful writer. It's the same example you can take from the movies also. Uh, many a times you'll be shocked at the kind of professions actors had before they became actors. So it's just that you know anything you do gives you a certain set of skills. Why I took the example of physics and engineering is because you know people who study these subjects they have to be prepared to spend long hours of reading and study, and that can really help when you want to become a writer. And uh, similarly, John Grisham again, uh, he's a lawyer, and he turned his experiences into a hard-hitting first novel called *A Time to Kill*. Apparently that was true, you know, it began from real experiences that he made into the novel. And then there's Siddharth Mukherjee, he's an Indian born physician and oncologist, and he wrote a book called The Emperor of Maladies, I'm sure you've heard about it. It won the Pulitzer Prize for Literature in the, U in the US in 2011. And um, for me, just to keep, you know, keep it real and to give you examples from my own life, uh, what are my strengths? Uh, the ability to keep at it. I'm pretty, pretty, uh, you know, I enjoy doing research, I enjoy reading. Um, I did a master's in English literature and one of my subsidiary subjects was history. And both those things combined have really helped me. And, you know, when I was a young civil servant, I was sent to Humpy. And uh, that really spurred me on to writing my first novel, which uh, it was a self-publishing effort called Riders on the Storm. But that was, you know, I, I was able to leverage all those ruins and seeing all those beautiful 
places. And then I went back to the history books and you know, just went on studying about Vijayanagara Empire and all that. So those are what I would say is my strengths. I'm sure all of you have your own strengths and skills. So yeah, please leverage those and go ahead and you know, make it work for you through your novel. Be realistic. That's the second point I feel. You know, to begin with, I think the most important thing is firstly, can you write? I mean, it may sound like a rude question. I really don't mean it in that way. But, you know, a lot of us, we think we can write. But can you write professionally in the sense that can you go on drafting and redrafting and redrafting? As you know, writing is a very lonely profession. It's something you just, it's just you and your, you know, paper or whether it's a computer or whatever. So can you do that? And uh, the example I've given of a travel writer, for instance, if you want to be a travel writer, you must have the means and the wherewithal to travel. It won't do to write from an armchair. You know, you can't just go to Google Street View and think that, okay, I can check out, you know, Helsinki and then write a story in that. Just won't work. Sorry, not a story. You can write an account of that. Just won't work. And I know from, from, for me, I can't do it. I can't leave home for such a long time. And uh, although I did write about Ladakh when my family and I went there for a, week, for a trip sometimes a few years ago, but that was just totally different. Writers like Paul Thiru and Bill Bryson are so popular because they travel around the world and record real experiences firsthand. And you know, same is the case in writing cookery books. You've got to know how to cook and experiment with new dishes all the time because people are smart. They'll, they'll know, you know, if you're trying to just pass on something that's not real from your experience. Similarly, if you want to write thrillers, be prepared to learn as much as you can about the police, criminology, weapons, drugs, different penal codes, and so on. I constantly trawl through the newspapers to get little, little points about that too. Just yesterday, I was reading about an incident where there was an actual attack in Chhattisgarh. And it was really interesting that the director general had actually given the commandant of the battalion specific instructions not to do something. And I, that was interesting for me to see the way that they interacted and, you know, the kind of the kind of warnings the cops were given, etc. And that's what I would say, you know, uh, do we always have our antenna on? Uh, to keep leveraging everything that you find in the newspapers and and of course in other movies and so many other things that's my second point i would say be realistic third is know your target audience now this may seem very simple but you know many people i think uh, do make this mistake in the beginning especially when they set out uh, are we writing for children or young adults or adults you know, we need to know that very clearly from the beginning and great success can be achieved in any of those. But we need to be clear about whom we're targeting. Uh, Enid Blyton was such a prolific writer and she only wrote for children. At least I don't know if she's written any other book uh, uh, for adults. Many of us would have grown up with reading Secret Seven, The Famous Five, Five Find Outers, and Naughty and Big Ears. And in fact, that's what spurred me on to become a writer. And J.K. Rowling in the Harry Potter series, same thing. Miss um, Rowling has written for adults, as you know. She, as you might know, she writes under the name I think Robert Galbraith or something like that, and she's written a few novels. But children are her greatest fans, and uh, she's always going to do that. You know, like she's she did um, Fantastic Beasts and Where You Can Find Them. Stephanie Myers did the same with Twilight. She targeted young adults and see how successful she was. And the interesting thing about the target audience is that really successful writers, they are very, very focused about that. Uh, Lee Child, this writer who was one of my favorites right now, uh, you might know that he writes about this character called Jack Reacher. And Jack Reacher is an ex-military um, police guy. And one would think that, you know, because he writes these boyish books, you know, filled with lots of action, etc., that he may just be interested in targeting the male audience, but that's not true. And what's interesting is he always has a strong female character. And in many of his earlier books, he had this tagline saying about Jack Preacher that men want to be him and women want to be like him. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, I got that wrong. Men want to be him and women want to be with him. That's right, sorry. So that's what's interesting, you know, that he even introduced it in a tagline. So who is that target audience? That's also important when you're promoting a book. For instance, there's no point in trying to promote an adult thriller at a children's book fair. So who's your target audience? Um, mine is adults, definitely adults all over the world. I haven't yet written for any other audience and I'm not really good at romance. So although that's a really good genre to, uh, to try and write in because the, here's a secret. I don't know if it's much of a secret, but here's something you probably know that women make the most loyal romance readers. And, for, and I think even fiction readers and men basically go uh, for nonfiction and the rough and tough stuff. But uh, because women are just such good and loyal readers, it really makes sense if you can to write, keeping that in mind. Should we go on to the next point? Assess the level of competition. Know what you're up against. I've taken the example of historical fiction, which is not always a best-selling genre. But uh, Hilary Mantle, she wrote a series of historical thrillers set in the reign of Henry VIII. I think they were set in that reign. Uh, I know that she won the Booker Prize twice, once for Wolf Hall in 2009 and Bring Up the Bodies in 2012. So, you know, she's done such a good job. Is there any point in writing in that uh, era again, you know? So you might think for a moment that uh, my novel, The Shakespeare Murders, it's an Elizabethan thriller. So you may think I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. Uh, my novel is about the London stage and it's totally different. It's nothing to do with palace intrigues. So same thing, uh, Amish Supati's Immortals of Meluha, it spurned a number of similar works. So there's no point in doing that again, although I know that uh, some other writers have also achieved a lot of success writing about you know, Indian mythology and it was a really, really popular, uh, popular thing a few years ago. But I don't know, is there any point in doing that when you have to contend with such a high benchmark? I mean, he's already done such a good job of it. You know? And here's where I've just given you an idea, like why I'm talking about the level of competition. Look at something, I've given the example of bank frauds. It may sound really you know, boring, but not really. I mean, in the light of what happened recently in our country, if you're a banker, how about writing about that? You know, something like um, how to keep your money safe <laughs> or, or a bank auditor's travails or something like that. You know? Similarly, a medical legal thrillers, you know, they've not been done much in our country. So if you're a doctor, and uh, you can also write a bit. That might be an interesting genre, you know, something you can do, something, a topic, and in that there's not much competition, at least not in our country. So that's just a small idea I've given you. Um, I don't know, there just, there are just so many areas which are open to us, and some things also are eternal, like, you know, women's issues, and you can go on and on writing, and you'll never exhaust that. Next point, recognize popular trends. Now the thing to do it is you need to be a quick writer to leverage this one. Like I just said, some topics never go out of fashion. I think we can always write about beauty or uh, cookery, self-help, the many, many genres, fashion. And those will never go, um, they'll never go out of demand. And besides these, if you can recognize a particular popular trend at the moment, you can really leverage that and achieve a lot of success. The only problem is that these things don't usually last for long, long. What's popular today will fade out quickly. The interesting thing in this about popular trends is that, you know, it, it reminds me of the writers I read while studying literature, George Eliot, Jane Austen, Thomas Hardy, all those writers, they were marvelous, marvelous. But besides Jane Austen, I don't know if Hardy or, uh, or George Eliot, some of their books, I don't know if they'd find a, a publisher nowadays. You know, something like Silas Mana, it's just, it's just filled with a lot of, it's beautiful writing, but it's filled with a lot of dreary, long passages, you know. 
And it's the same thing with the Russians, the great Russian novelists, uh, the Brothers Karamazov, which is one of my favorite novels. But that has got just so much long, long stuff, long discourses on morality and religion. And I know that at the time uh, they were publishing them in a serial. So they used, to, they used to serialize them in the newspaper. So people used to actually wait and wait for the next one to come out every week. So perhaps they were just filling up words or something, but some of those are really hard to read and enjoy. And same thing with Tolstoy. I mean, perhaps some of the problem I've had with these writers is that I'm reading them in translation. So uh, maybe it's difficult, but just, just they're just really not fun to read sometimes. And um, another example is Edmund Spencer. He used to be the Queen's, I think it, he was Queen Elizabeth's poet laureate. And he wrote these long, beautiful poems, lyrical poems, the fairy queen, prothalamin, epithalamin. And at those times, imagine they were popular. People used to actually like to read them. And at one time, of course, poetry was hugely popular, but not anymore. So poetry usually doesn't sell well anymore. So can you recognize popular trends? Can you leverage those? And I just think that we need to be really quick about it because these trends just don't last. Finally, the sixth point, choose a genre you love reading. It's been said very often, read, read, read while writing. So what do you love reading? If it's one particular genre, you're unlikely to succeed in something entirely different since the genre you love will be your strong point. Uh, I love reading thrillers. And again, like I said, since I did English literature, authors like Thomas Hardy and Jane Austen and all, they inspire me. But otherwise it's the contemporary thriller writers who I'm reading all the time because I'm writing the same genre. So there's Lee Child, Ian Rankin, I don't know if you've heard about him, uh, the John Reber series. Then there's Mark Billingham, he's a brilliant writer. He writes about a detective called Tom Thorne. There's Stephen Booth, who's not very well known in our country, but he's he writes about uh, Diane Fry and Ben Cooper, wonderful detectives in small towns in England, and Simon Koenig. And more recently, there's a writer called Oliver Harris, whom I'm, who I really like. So these are the people that, you know, uh, they just they just inspire you all the time and they give you ideas and uh, also some some uh, you can also read related stuff for your genre you know it doesn't have to just be a novels like i said it's when you go back to do research and stuff i wrote this story called uh, gods on speed like i said in the beginning it's set in the trojan war so it was really interesting i had to go back to the classics you know read uh, read the iliad and parts of the odyssey again so that was interesting, but it's because it's again it comes back to this whole thing about thrillers, you know, that sort of writing. So I would just suggest that we should just choose a genre that we love. Here are some of my favorite quotes. <laughs> the purpose of literature is to turn blood into ink. That's T.S. Eliot. And um, I've got another quote which says, it's not about how much you want it, it's about how hard you're willing to work. Plato said, never discourage anyone who continually makes progress no matter how slow. And someone called Earl Nightingale said, never give up on a dream just because of the time it'll take to accomplish. Time will pass anyway. I think that's a really important point. And especially from my own life, I can tell you, you know, I've been writing since the age of 10. So I mean, the first book was called The Mystery of the Missing Treasure. It was just, I was 10 years old. And as you can see, it's only now that I got my first real break as a novelist with the Shakespeare murders. And that was in 2017. So it, it's a long haul. Um, I would publish a lot, uh, but nothing that was, Professional, you know, it was mostly self publishing and uh, one or two ebooks, but they did nothing for me as a writer, and it's only this book. So it takes time, but uh, I guess there's just an option that 
you know, either you do it or you don't do it. There's no other way. Now, here's an interesting point. It may sound kind of uh, contradictory to what I've said, but once you've made a name for yourself, it's time to try something different if you want. The secret is that you can be good at two related genres. Not just, like I said, you can try writing poetry, but if you possess a keen and observant mind, you can try something requiring those skills. I've used the example of Bill Bryson, who's one of my favorite travel writers. He's also written a book on Shakespeare, and he's written a book filled with science facts, all a short history of nearly everything. So, you know, so long as we are good at a particular thing, I, I would just say take one at a time because these are difficult things to do. And it's hard enough finding an agent and getting published, you know, but um, if you can do two things well, fine, but it, it's hard. And I would suggest that you first wait to make a name in one particular genre. And then after that, try something else. There are many writers who've done that. Many of them use different names. Uh, so that could be a fun thing, but it's a lot of hard work and uh, it's not, it's just definitely not easy. So thank you. Um, that's basically all I have for today. And thank you for listening in. Thank you, Juggernaut. And um, I hope it's been an interesting session for you and I hope it's been helpful. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks, Sharon. So um, I have a question for you. So I mean, yeah. as a person who's in publishing, it's great like to hear that uh, before a writer starts writing, they start thinking about what a publisher wants or what they read. <laughs> but you know, I've also I'm since I'm also in publishing, I also hear that one must only write when they have a story to tell. So I just wanted to know what you thought of this. And uh, how does a writer deal with a dilemma like that? Have you gone through something like that when you've written? And you've written across genres, right? So what do you yeah, feel? Uh, Natasha, a really good question. But, you know, what I feel is, yes, up to a point. Obviously, I mean, unless you have a story to tell, you're not writing. But the, the other thing about, you know, you just can't really sit and wait for inspiration either uh, it depends if you want to be a writer you have to keep that in mind that's what i feel you have to keep your audience in mind you have to keep you have to think that does a publisher want it you know is there is there any market for what you're writing and that's why this uh, some people have said that you know if you want to just write what you want then be prepared to be very poor <laughs> so that's all i can say i mean i I've, i haven't really struggled with this because fortunately i've just always wanted to write thrillers and a bit of romance but Otherwise, uh, uh, I think we need to be a little uh, professional, should I say, or a little, I don't know, maybe cold-hearted about it. <laughs> so a lot of, so in India, the biggest genres are mythology and I would say, I think romance. So mm -hmm. a lot of new writers, so we hold these multiple contests, right, on our writing platform and we have several writing prompts across genres. And obviously we found that the one on mythology did really well because somehow people want to read and write that genre. And uh, you know what, what would you have to say when people start like start their work with a genre in mind? Is that, uh -huh. um, and, and can writers yeah, actually- you know, Natasha, I've just lost you. Uh, it's not a very good connection somehow. Yeah, is this Could you better? That? Yeah, yeah, this is better. Yeah. Could you repeat that? Yeah. So what would you say to a writer who wants to begin writing with a very specific genre in mind? And and the second part of that question would be can writers indeed write across various genres? See, it's difficult, it's definitely difficult, but I think you could, that's what I said, you know, if you can, if you have a particular set of skills, if you're able to go on and on and on for something, and if you're very clear in your mind what you want to do, then yeah, why not? But, you know, again, it comes back to that whole issue that I talked in the, about in the beginning, that we need to establish identities first, that's what I feel. And, you know, as, as you know, being in publishing, it's not really easy 
And if you're a writer who's doing this and that, I don't know, is it, is it easy for you to take them on? I think if I have to speak for what we are doing at uh, Lot, I would say that uh, there are sometimes very conscious decisions. For instance, we want to build our children's uh, list, right? So it's a very conscious okay. decision. Uh -huh. we want, we're looking for authors who can write for children. And at the same okay. time, we know that a large uh, segment of our readers want to read uh, love and romance right so mm -hmm. we're constantly trying to you know constantly looking for stories in that genre uh, okay, but at okay. the same, but the same time the dilemma is that science fiction is just not big enough in india so shall we that's true authors who uh, you know who can write it and write it really well so i guess <laughs> that, that if you're picking a genre which is not a very popular genre you just kind of have to be mm -hmm. the best, like be fantastic and so that, you know, it's not a miss, a complete miss. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And they are, they are success stories, uh, the kind that you're mentioning, and it does happen now and again, but because that's so rare, it's a bit dangerous, I would say, you know, to depend on that. So that's why it would be safest to begin with what you're good at and what the market wants. And then when you've established your name, uh, then perhaps when you've got a loyal readership, then maybe, you know, you could just expand a little bit. At least that's what I feel. So Shubham has an interesting question. He's saying, mm -hmm. how, do, so he's saying, how do I pick my genre? I'm an engineer with a taste for humor, uh, thrill, <laughs> action packed huh? detective stories. So how uh -huh. do I know? One really is my strong point as a writer. Uh -huh. Well, I think that, again, I would say, how about, you know, humorous detective? You know, that, that's not so done, really, in our country, not done well. And uh, thrillers and detective stories, I, I would say they would always sell. But if, he's, uh, if he likes humor, it would be great to have someone who's witty and, you know, those, with those nice one-liners and all. And uh, I know I would like to read something like that. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, right? So you mix the <laughs> and uh, create your own sort of a niche. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions at this point? So I think, Sharon, that's it. We don't have many questions, uh -huh. but I'm feeling... Um, okay, so Shubham has asked a follow-up question what uh -huh. genre would you assign to a story that okay that's an incomplete question so i don't know <laughs> um so let's I'm, we're going to sh we usually share the recordings uh, in uh -huh. a follow-up uh, and also the deck you had created sharon so All right, uh -huh. uh, yeah so i'll send that across to the attendees and if there are any follow-up questions we can uh, possibly connect all of you. And Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks yeah, so yeah, much. No, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Was... Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.